Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about ginkgo biloba. And this is something we haven't used in a long time. I actually years ago used to buy supplements, mostly for Patrick, because we knew it was really good to help with memory and brain fog and just give the brain some a boost and some support. And he was really wanting something like that. So I used to give him supplements and actually have long since forgot about it. He does take lion's mane, which by the way, I have a video on and I'll be linking to my full playlist, but that has that video as well as this one and at least 90 others that I've been working on for the past seven years where I do herb profiles like the one I'm doing today. But what I want to say is that what spurred me into doing this right now, even though I'm not growing it at this time and haven't used it in years, was that my friend that they moved here a few years ago and they have 40 acres just outside of town. And so we get together a lot. We share our herbs with each other. I've given her seeds and things from my garden and vice versa. Well, she shared with me some of the leaves that she had collected from her tree. She's got a little ginkgo tree that she's growing in her front yard and now i'm really encouraged to want to try to grow one because i'm like i need to do some research into this again so i can decide what's going to be the best way to use these and yes these are yellow because even though the leaves are green when they're fresh you actually the best time to harvest them for their use is once they turn yellow and start falling from the tree. That's when they're going to have their highest potency, believe it or not, which I thought was really interesting because typically when it comes to most of other things, we want to get the things where they're fresh and new in the spring when it comes to herbs and that kind of thing, rather than harvesting leaves late in the season when they start changing color. But with the ginkgo biloba, that is definitely, that is one of the things that makes it a little unique. Here's a picture I actually took right after she harvested her most recent leaves and she kind of made a rose out of it. So when we were out at her place and I thought that was cute. So I took a couple pictures and like, this will be great if I do a video on this. So then I'm like, well, I better get busy and do this video. So it caused me, of course, just like always to do some deep research and to start learning more about it and all the many things. Because a lot of times when we look at an herb, we think of the one thing that we hear most commonly about that herb, but don't stop to think or look into the fact that there it may have many other benefits, which this one does. And I am so excited to read about this. The thing that gives it its potency is it's very high in antioxidants. And by the way, it's the leaves and the seeds that are used, but in modern medicine, most commonly, like when you're buying supplements and such, it's made from the extract from the leaves themselves. So just so you know that, but yes, you can buy capsules. You can take it that way. You can, if you have a tree or you're able to get some of the dried leaves like this, you can make your own extracts, tinctures, or you can use them to make teas or powder them up and make your own capsules out of them. Oh, yes, I'm also going to be linking, if I remember, to two articles. One's going to be from the NIH because I always double check everything at the NIH so I can have because that's where they'll show the actual scientific studies and explain them. It can be very dry reading, but at least you can have that for proof. And then I like places like Healthline, Dr. Axe, and some other places, but also check this information on medical websites because I like to cross-reference everything and then pull it all together. So let me go ahead and read to you these benefits, and I'm sure I'm still not gonna be covering them all, so if anybody knows of any more they'd like to add, please put those in comments down below, and let me get to what I have written down right here. So anti-inflammatory is one of the things it's really good at. So, and usually what you'll find is anything that is a natural anti-inflammatory is also very good to help with pain, especially headaches and migraines. And yes, the ginkgo is very good for that as well. And also because of that, it's, it's good for joint pain, especially for arthritis. It is known, in, and it's in that NIH article, it, it covers this as well, that it is a natural anti-cancer. So it can help prevent cancer and possibly even fight it. It's really great for heart health and its circulation and preventing heart disease. And then I mentioned brain health. 
And that is not only in reference to memory, which is a big part of it, but also helps to prevent strokes, dementia, Alzheimer's, depression, and anxiety. It also may help with fibromyalgia. I don't come across a lot of herbs that talk specifically about fibromyalgia, but I get this question a lot. So I was excited to read that about the ginkgo. So there's one right there. And I, this one really made me happy because the more video editing I do, and I'm always trying different things, but I tell you this whole, this job of YouTube has taken its toll on my eyes over the past several years. And so one of the things I found about this is that it's very good to help reduce or reverse macular degeneration, glaucoma, and other eye issues. So very good for your vision. It's helpful for asthma and COPD. For PMS, it helps with your quality of sleep. It's very good for skin and is anti-aging. That would be all those antioxidants. And this is whether you're taking it internally or using it in a salve. It is a natural antibacterial and is helpful with diabetes. So that's what I've got for all its benefits. But like I said, I'm sure there's more. I feel like that was short compared to all the stuff that I was reading about it. So let me mention those uses again. Tinctures slash extracts. All tinctures, oxymils, and more are extracts. So I usually call everything an extract. It just is going to depend on what you're making it from, what your solvent is. And then you can take capsules. I always recommend capsules, never tablets. And then teas. So whether it be you're buying it already pre-made like a tea, I always make all my own teas. But let me cover a few things about side effects. So just like with anything, you can have side effects and usually what you're going to find with any natural remedy and it doesn't matter if it's a food or an herb in particular a bark a root it doesn't matter anybody can get too much the main things you have to be wary of is if you have any allergies and you may not know until you try it so you always need to start small with anything and if you have any kind of reaction stop taking it and because of some of the properties so remember this is very good for the heart and circulation so if you're on heart-related medication, especially if you're on anything that is anticoagulant or antiplatelet type drugs, you don't want to be using this. You got to at least be very, very careful with it. And then if you're on antidepressants. So these are a couple of things that you, if you're on those kind of drugs, I would say really when it comes down to it, any kind of pharmaceutical drug can have a reaction to natural herbs. A lot of times it can be, it can really be a strong reaction. And other times it's simply the fact that what's gonna happen is that the herbs are working as they should. And that's gonna make the medication pretty much useless. And so a lot of times they try to scare you away from using it because it actually might work better for you. And so if you're already on a medication for something, you know, such as anxiety, depression, and more, you know, and this is something that's good for that, it's most likely just going to make the uh, the drug that you're taking useless. And then it's just a waste of money. So uh, you'd be better off anyway. I mean, antidepressants are some of the worst things out there. Um, there's a lot of them out there that are terrible that nobody should be on. But those I think, I don't think anyone should be on. They're bad news all the way around. And so be looking into natural things like ginkgo and so much more that can help with just your overall brain health. Because usually things like lion's mane and more, anything that's good for your overall brain health helps with depression, anxiety, uh, staves off dementia, Alzheimer's, and all that. All that tends to fall under there. And then obviously, also, you know, with children and if you're pregnant, these are things you need to look specifically into before you start taking it or giving it to children just do your own deeper research on that which by the way one video I always like to include in videos like this is that i have a video out there i did on how you can do your own research into all these kinds of things because i'm not going to have all the answers for you i don't think anyone out there is going to have all the answers for you when i we started looking into getting off the the thyroid medication and just going all natural uh, 12 years ago, I could not find anyone that would really, that really had all the answers for me. I just had to research myself and I figured it out on my own, what was going to work for us. And even then it was still, 
trial and error. I wasn't positive that everything we did was going to work, but it did. And we've been off our medication for over 11 years now, 11 and a half years right now. So I'll make sure I link to that video down below so you can learn how to do your own research. It's a very important step, especially while you still have inter internet. You never know when it might not be available. Um, it makes a lot easier to gather information from various different sites and pull it together, but then also getting yourself some good books on any of this stuff, but it still might take a little research to find out what book's going to best suit you. I do have a couple of book related videos out there, and I do mention some books in that video on the how to do your own research. So again, please share your stories down below. Do you grow ginkgo? How well does it do for you? and how do you use it, or even if you buy it, what's your favorite way to use it? And if you have any testimonials on that and how it's helped you with anything, please, please share those down below so we can learn from you as well, especially me, because this is, even though, I, like I say, I used to buy the capsules. I don't know that I ever took them. I always bought them for Patrick, but now I wanna start using this for myself to see how well it will help with my eye health. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to check out the links I'll be putting in the description box down below by clicking on more or show more somewhere down here below my the video screen. And thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.